It's been a little while since I finished the Fels Analog in Fire Emblem Engage, and I've done a few streams wherein I've been using the characters from said Fels Analog and figuring out how they work, how to make them tick, how to make them hum, how to make the best use that I can out of them, and I've settled on some builds. There's still some work in progress stuff, but I'm starting to get the feel for what might be best for our lovely winds and our lovely dragons. And today we're going to be talking about the three builds that I'm using for the three winds. We'll be talking about our fell dragon friends in the next video, but for now, there's a lot to cover. So let's get into it, shall we? Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. If you enjoy my content, find it fun, entertaining, educational, you learn something or see something you want to try, then consider subscribing, leaving a like, and commenting what it is that you like most about what I've done recently. I'm a small creator, trying to grow, trying to hit 15k subscribers by the end of the year, and this is my full-time job. So if you would be willing to support me so that I can continue to support my life with my girlfriend and being a successful YouTuber, that would mean the world, and uh, I'll remember you forever for it. So if you could do that, That'd be great. But today we're going to be talking about, again, three characters from the Fels Analog. If you're at all worried about spoilers or anything like that, this is your only chance to bail now. I'm going to be talking about everything. Story stuff is done. Characters are what they are. So bail now or forever hold your peace. We're starting off with our discussion of the three wins today with the leader of said three wins, Zelestia. Now, Zelestia surprised me in terms of not just how much I enjoy her character, but how much I enjoy playing with her on my team. She's really good. Like, Zephia never really struck me as that powerful of a character. Maybe it's just because the AI doesn't use her well. She doesn't have a proper build, quote-unquote. But Zelestia? Zelestia is awesome. So let's talk about her stats first. I'm using Celestia in her Melusine class, as it is her unique class, and I wanted to at least play around with her in her unique class. She gets her unique Soul Blade ability, all that type of good stuff, so it seemed worthwhile to keep her in the class. And it's the only class in the game that I can get that can use swords and magic and is flying, so it's pretty damn good. And her stats are just as good. We're looking at 70 HP, 45 Strength, 45 Magic, 45 Dex, seeing a trend here, 65 speed, very, very good. 40 defense, 45 res, 20 luck, and 10 build. So already you can see, those are some nice growths. When we're on Maddening, we're going to be looking at HP every other level with sometimes we're getting two HP. Speed every other level with some points where we get two speed. And then strength, magic, dex, defense, and res almost every level uh, you can't beat it. Like, she's got phenomenal stats. You can see here for me, she's at level 30. So, an equivalent promoted unit would be level 10, having been at level 20 at their base before they promoted. And she's got phenomenal stats. We're going to go into what she's best at here and the way that I'm using her. So, the emblem that I have chosen to pair her with is Camilla. And this is the pairing that I used in the actual Fel's Analog as well to great effect. Camilla boosting Zelestia's move range via her soar ability is very, very nice. And the stats that Zelestia gets from being paired with Camilla are phenomenal for her. She's getting a plus 7 to her HP. This is all at bond level 20, of course. Plus 5 to speed and plus 4 to res. So not only is she nicely tanky, she's got solid defense and a lot of HP, but also has a ton of res. So mages are not going to be dealing that much damage to her, even on Maddening. And that whopping plus 5 to speed is going to be a huge difference maker for Zelestia to be able to fly in, double things, fly out, get kills, all that type of good stuff. She's very strong in that regard. For her skills, we have the following. Her natural friendly boost, which gives her to hit plus 20 to allies within two spaces for one turn when she gets a kill. If she can double and does a lot of magic damage or physical damage, this is going to be a lot easier to secure. She has her Soul Blade ability that she gets at level 5 promoted. When attacking with a sword, damage is calculated using the average of foe's defense and res, making it much easier for her to punch through things that have high defense. If for some reason she doesn't want to use her magic, which most of the time you're going to, but still, it's nice to have. I gave her Momentum from Sigurd, 
Grants attack plus one to first attack during combat for each space unit moved before attacking with a max of plus 10. Figured this would combo well with Soar since it's granting her plus two to move when she's engaged. She's already a flying unit with a move of six. So if you move her her max distance, that's six free damage on her first attack. Eight if you have Soar. Very powerful. I've been very happy with this choice. And then I actually put speed and dex plus three on her which has been pretty solid. Enemies in maddening mode can be quite dodgy due to their high speed, and you want to be able to double as much as possible, so combining the plus three speed with Camilla's plus five and Zelestia's naturally high speed growths means that she's doubling on the regular, and that dex plus three is meaning she's fairly accurate while doing it. Her dexterity isn't her strongest stat, but a plus three goes a long way, as it turns out. Then being paired with Camilla gives her the Dragon Vein ability, and as a flying unit, this allows Zelestia to create a healing area that restores HP at the start of your turn. Pretty decent support option if she has nothing better going on, just put down an AoE heal around your team, patch them up at the start of your turn. It can make quite the difference. I mean, 10 HP across 5-6 units is a lot, and this is something you can do for free if you don't have anything else you want to do on your turn. It's very nice. Decisive Strike Plus is not an ability that's been as useful on someone like Zelestia. I'm not building her with crits in mind. If unit initiates combat and lands a critical, deals 10 damage to foe after combat. This isn't really something that comes into play for me that much. It's a nice bonus, sure, but it's the other parts of Camilla's kit that I really like to have on Zelestia. When it works, cool, but could I build into it? Maybe. It's not really my focus, though. Detoxify is nice because it just cures poison at the start of the turn. You don't have to worry about pesky things like thieves making Zelestia, who's decently tanky, a bit less tanky when she gets poisoned, so that's always nice to have. Groundswell is giving us the ability to clear negative effects that are on the ground, things like flames, miasma, or whatnot. You clear them and recover 10 HP. Again, kind of a niche case, but if you're stuck with not a whole lot else to do and there's some sort of harmful effect that you want to absorb, get some healing, you can do that. But most of the time, honestly, I'm going to just be using my Dragon Vein to clear spaces like that, so it hasn't been the most useful thing around, but when it's helpful, hey, it's there. Soar, of course, is giving us a move of plus two. We can cross trains if we're flying, which we already are, but because we're flying, we actually get an extra move of plus one, so we can move up to nine spaces, making Zelestia's dive bomb blitzkrieg strategies all the easier to pull off. And then, of course, finally, we do have Camilla's Dark Inferno, used to deal damage to foes on certain spaces near unit and set those spaces on fire. Not the most useful emblem attack, I'm not going to lie, but I have been finding ways to use it. Having guaranteed magical damage or physical damage, depending on which of Camilla's axes you use to initiate this attack, can be nice. Being able to deny area to enemies because they can't move through it due to the flames or dealing bonus damage to enemies that are standing in the flames at their start of the turn is solid, but it doesn't have any particularly massive damage output, and um, it can wind up being a hindrance as much as a help sometimes if you're trying to move your own ground troops through the area, and now can't because it's on fire. But, I mean, as a flying unit, at least, Zelestia doesn't need to worry about it, so you can use it as a little bit of an area denial strategy, and she'll be relatively safe as long as there aren't other flyers around. As far as her weapons are concerned, I have her with a bog standard silver sword. Not something I'm using often. Again, she's got good magic, better magic than she has physical by a little bit. And uh, enemies generally tend to have lower res than defense. But there's been a couple of times where having a silver sword on hand has been useful. And she can do a decent amount of damage with it, even though it's not forged. So there's something to be said there. I could look at putting a stronger sword on her. She does have a rank sword, so a brave sword could even be in the works. Her Bolganon plus three with the Sigurd Engrave has been her go-to, and I mean, this is just nasty. She's got the build to use it without losing any speed. She has a nice amount of avoid with this, does a ton of damage. I can reliably one round most things with Zelestia with this Bolganon Tome. It's been pretty nasty. Then, of course, she has a Wind Tome, very bog standard. Ideally, I would have an Elwind Tome on her, but I just haven't had the resources to invest in that for her, but this is just an anti-flyer option. Lots of Wyverns and Griffins around in the late game. Wyverns especially, Zelestia is able to deal a lot of damage to with this because of her high speed and magic, so it's been a useful utility tool, if nothing else. And then I had a leftover plus three Thunder Tome with a Sauron engrave on it for just when I need a good three range option, don't want to get counterattacked, or I just don't quite have the move to get where I need to go. 
this is a good option, and she doesn't get weighed down by it at all. She's actually not losing any speed off of this, so it's a nice option for when I just need to snipe something. And then, of course, we have Camilla's weapons, which all synergize quite well with Celestia. We don't get to use Soul Blade with these axes, but still, having the Bolt Axe that gives plus two to speed because of the gems that I have on it is a nice option. It makes us fast. It deals good magic damage. You can break lances with this, which is very nice, and still get the benefit of attacking with magic. It's very strong. The Lightning Tome, which is a Brave Tome, has been a little less useful than I would have liked or I would have expected. Its hit isn't the best, and its damage is pretty low, so unless I can upgrade this with specific orbs to give it more power, which is not something I generally worry about or even remember to do most of the time, since it requires going into the Tower of Trials and doing things there that I'd rather be, you know, spending that time playing the game. Uh, it's probably not going to be something that I use too often, but when you can pop off with it and get a big quad with it, it does a lot of good damage. And then finally, Camilla's Axe is a truly nasty option. Not the most accurate thing around, but grants res plus 10, and you deal extra damage equal to foes res minus their defense. So this gives you the option to actually pr hit pretty hard, and if you're fighting mages with it, it's going to make you very tanky as a result. And I often am with Zelastia. With this playstyle, I tend to try to fly into a group of enemies and allies that have been in a bit of a scrum, get an easy kill, oftentimes on an armored unit that I can blow up with magic, or a mage that I can easily deal a lot of damage to with Camilla's axe or my sword, and then get my friendly boost to trigger, giving all of my allies within two spaces of Zelestia plus 20 to hit, which can be a game changer on Maddening. Lets you punch through dodgy enemies like Swordmasters, get around covert units and terrain a little bit more easily, all that type of stuff. And it makes units like, say, Madeline, who we'll talk about soon, who have very bad hit, a little bit more accurate. So, all in all, I've been very happy with Zelestia. I think she's a very powerful unit. I can't wait to try other builds with her as well. I was actually thinking of a Sniper Zelestia build. Very accurate, high speed, high damage, and can snipe something to give friendly boost to her allies around her, but I haven't had the chance to experiment with any of that yet. If you are looking for a solid build for Melusine Zelestia, I would definitely recommend Camilla and something similar to this. Moving on to the second in command of the wins, we have Gregory, and this is one of the more dramatic departures from the base class of these characters that I have decided to go with. Gregory is a very niche character. He's a very strong character, don't get me wrong, but he's very niche. He does two things very well, and that's hit hard with his high magic and take very little damage due to his high res. But that's about all he's got going for him in his base Sage class. And I felt like there were some better options for him here. So I, after consulting with my chat a little bit and going through some of our options, decided to try out Griffin Knight, Greg the Griffin Rider. And it's surprisingly good. So let's talk about the stats. As a Griffin Knight, Gregory has the following growths. 55 HP, 40 strength, a very nice 65 magic, 35 dex, 45 speed, pretty serviceable, considering Greg has pretty bad speed to begin with. 35 defense, 65 res, 40 luck, and 5 build for an all-around pretty balanced array of stats, I have to say. Due to his natural inclinations, he has a B rank in staves, which is awesome, and can wield A rank swords, which does give him some nice options, but there's really only one that we're going to be looking at here. As far as his emblem and stats are concerned, I've been using Gregory with Micaiah, who normally I would have on my support Allier, but Allier has actually been doing a very good job with Veronica, and I figured having some healing bonuses for Greg would be good here. At bond rank 8 with Micaiah, we already have plus 2 to our magic, plus 3 to our res, and plus 4 to our luck, all of which are very nice stats for Gregory to have as he already has good magic and we want to be dealing good magical damage, and we want our magic to be high to make our effectiveness with staves all the better. With high res, Gregory can easily withstand attacks from mages, and hit the plus four to luck means that he'll be at least slightly dodgy, although his low speed makes that a little bit more of a daunting prospect. In terms of skills, we have the following. Gregory's survival plan gives him plus 20 avoid when there are more enemies than allies within three spaces, and this is part of the reason I wanted him to be on a melee class, or at least a class that's going to be in the thick of the fight a little bit more, because despite that poor speed and relatively okay luck, plus 20 avoids, nothing to sneeze at. And I figured we should be trying to make use of that. Then I gave him magic and dexterity. This is a little bit of a placeholder, but 
Greg's dex isn't the best. Increasing his hit rate is going to be pretty good, while giving him extra magic for his magical attacks and his staves is obviously very nice. Finally, as I am using Greg as a bit more of a support character here, I'm starting to give him Staff Mastery with Micaiah. He only has one rank of it right now, this is still a work in progress, but still, having increased hit when using offensive staves is very, very nice, and healing for extra HP when you're using defensive or support staves, again, very strong. Then of course we have Micaiah's suite of skills, Cleric, not necessary on this, Griffin Knights can already use staves, but I mean, the sentiment is nice I suppose. Healing Light, so Greg will be able to heal himself for 50% of the HP that he restores on an ally when he heals him with a staff. Silence Ward, so he will never be silenced, which is very nice when you have a support unit that you're counting on being able to do supporty things when and where you need it. Augment, granting increased staff range by 5 and area of effect by 1. Area heals, area warps, it's Micaiah, we know her, we love her, very strong. And then, of course, the classic Great Sacrifice, allowing Greg to sacrifice his HP to heal all allies to full. Very strong suite of skills. Anyone who's been playing Engage knows how good Micaiah is, and I think these skills really do complement Greg quite well. Obviously, again, he doesn't need Cleric, but that's fine. I tend to put Micaiah on characters that can use staves already, for the most part, once we leave the early game, so it's totally fine. As far as weapons and staves are concerned, the main key here is the fact that we want to make sure that we're still attacking with our magic stat as opposed to our strength stat with Greg. While he is going to be getting decent strength growths off of Griffin Knight, his magic is still what shines, so the Leaven Sword seems like a natural choice. It is plus two with the Krom Engrave currently, so it actually has good damage, doesn't really weigh us down that much, we have decent avoid, decent dodge. It's an all-around effective weapon, and I've actually been impressed with the damage output that Greg has had with it. He's easily hitting for 30 damage a pop on most enemies with this, and it's been pretty good to see. It makes him actually able to contribute, despite ostensibly, in my mind anyway, being a healer. Then, of course, I swap staves around as things demand. I have a Physic and a Treat staff on him at all times, pretty much. You can swap out Treat for Mend if you don't have a Treat from the Well, just to make sure that we're healing HP on the regular. And then I'll have anything from Obstruct to Silence to Rewarp to Warp to anything else, really, that you're going to want to be able to do a large effect staff use with when you're using Micaiah. Having Griffin Knight Gregory with something like, say, the rewarp strategy is really nice as well, as if you want to just, like, throw a pure healer into the mix, you might wind up losing them if you're not careful if you rewarp bomb a whole group in, but with Gregory on Griffin Knight, he's got decent defenses, he's got decent speed, his survival plan is giving him extra avoid, and he can actually fight and deal damage, so being able to have him summon the cavalry, kind of fly them in on the back of his Griffin, it's pretty good, and I've got to say, I've been quite impressed with his performance thus far. So, uh, there are, again, plenty of different things that you can do with Gregory. I was using him as a Dire Thunder bot because of his high magic, using healing when I needed him to, and then just bombing things from afar with that, with the Olwen S Bond ring, but there's a lot of different things that you can do with Gregory, I'm sure. Finally, we're going to be moving on to Madeline, and as much as I really, really enjoy Madeline's character, especially compared to Marnie, I like the coloration of her armor and her bow a lot more than the hot pink that Marnie has, Madeline, again, kind of suffers from a similar issue that Greg does, in that she does one thing very well, and I've been having a hard time figuring out what else she can do. Madeline is a tank, through and through. She can take a physical hit and not do much else in my experience she's got very high hp very high strength very high defense naturally before we even get into the growth rates but all of her other stats are quite poor and it means that a lot of the time beyond just absorbing hits madeline has been struggling to do much for me on maddening but want to make her work so i've got a little bit of a build in mind here again i discussed some things with my chat and we're pretty happy with where we've got Madeline at at the moment. She needs some work, but let's go over her stats first. So as you can see, I have Madeline as a great knight as opposed to her base general class. She loses some stats in the trade-off, but the increased move is nice, and her stat growths in great knight are quite good. So let's go over those now. She has a whopping 95 HP growth, so she's going to be growing that HP all the damn time. She's got 65 strength for big hits, 20 magic, which is completely irrelevant here. She does not need it. 30 dex, not the best. 
first. This is probably Madeline's biggest weakness, and it's something we're going to have to work around a little bit, but it is what it is. 15 speed, not too surprising for a tanky general-esque character like this. 80 defense, again, not a surprise for a tanky general character like this, but man, she is a brick house, let me tell you. Then 35 res, which is not terrible, but considering she's got really bad base res to begin with, she's going to be suffering when she gets hit by magic, much like Louie. And then 30 luck and 15 build. Nothing really to write home about there. Fairly standard stats. So this is, a, again, a very specialized spread, similar to Gregory, but instead of magic and res, we've got strength and defense. But unlike Gregory, it's been a little bit harder to patch up the deficiencies that Madeline has. For now, I have her with Ike, as it seems like the obvious choice. I took Ike from Kigetsu, my general Kigetsu build, gave Kigetsu Roy for a little while. We're seeing how that works. And I mean, with Ike, Madeline performs about as well as you would expect, which is pretty damn good. If you've ever used Ike Louie, then, well, you know how this works. At bond level 19, Madeline has a plus 7 to her HP, plus 4 to strength, and plus 5 to defense, meaning that physical units, not going to be doing a whole lot to her. It also means that you may wind up running into situations where units don't want to attack her at all on Maddening because of her high defense, but that's just a problem endemic to tanks across the board on Maddening. As far as abilities are concerned, we have her personal knightly code. If foe initiates combat and unit is adjacent to an ally, unit takes two less damage. Just flat. Not bad at all. If you're standing in a line defending allies, then you're just going to be taking less damage as it is, which is pretty nice. And this pairs very well with the Great Knight's allied defense. If unit is between an ally and a foe, reduces damage to unit by three during combat with that foe. I mean, adjacent ally, adjacent ally, five flat damage reduction. Can't argue with that. I then went with Axe Power 2 because she didn't have that much SP, but having some extra damage when you're only hitting once anyway is pretty solid. You could potentially make an argument for some other options, potentially coming off of Hector, but for right now... Axe Power, it's been getting the job done. And there's a reason that we want Axe Power as well, which we'll get into when we go over her equipment. Then I do have Resolve on her, as I'm not planning on keeping Ike on Madeline forever. I have some other options, and Ike does belong to Kagetsu, so having Resolve for when she does not have Ike equipped will be nice. If unit's HP is 75% or less after combat, grants defense and res plus 5, as long as unit's HP stays below 75%. This is a classic tank ability can't argue with it. Then because she does have Ike equipped currently, she comes with Demolish. This is pointless. There's been very, very rare cases where I've ever cared about having Demolish on a character, but it comes base with Ike, so it is what it is. Then we have Resolve Plus currently because of Ike, which is giving Defense and Res plus 7 under the same conditions as regular Resolve. Reposition so we can move units around, maybe get them out of the way, get them behind us so we can be initiating these plus 5 reductions from our combination of abilities here. Wrath, where we get extra crit based on how much HP we are currently missing at the start of combat, which for a tank, again, you'll probably have some damage missing, so getting some extra crit somewhere along the way is not bad. Lagoo's Friend, so we're taking 50% less damage but can't dodge. We weren't going to be dodging anyway, I'll tell you that much, not with that speed. And then Great Aether to get extra defense and res and hit in a large area, healing for the HP that we deal in damage. Not bad. Not bad. It's an Ike build with the tank. It's, it's good. Going over to our items and our weapons, this is where Madeline's biggest weakness needs to be discussed. And her primary weapon on Maddening at like chapter 21... <laughs> is a plus three iron axe with the emblem of rivals engraving on it because madeline can't hit for shit <laughs> and uh she needs something that can help her try to land some hits an iron axe plus three gets decent hit on it compared to other axes and the rivals engraving gives some more hit and a little bit of crit and uh man this is the only weapon that she can hit with reliably now, fortunately, because of her high strength, plus the plus four from Ike, plus axe power too, she can actually hit quite hard with this iron axe, and I've been having her get kills fairly reliably with it, but I would prefer if she could use something like her pole axe, or her brave axe, or her hand axe, or a silver lance, and actually hit reliably with it, but 
With a dex of 15 against enemies that have a really high speed, it's kind of a tall order. I'm considering swapping out Resolve or Axe Power plus 2 to inherit plus hit from Sigurd, as that would go a long way towards making Madeline a lot more reliable, but I haven't had the resources to pull that off yet. I've been hearing people say that other classes such as Sniper or Warrior can be really good with Madeline as well, essentially turning her into a better version of Etie. Again, I haven't had the chance to experiment with that that much, and this has not been a bad build for Madeline. I really just need to be able to patch up her accuracy. Once I can do that, she's going to be quite good. She'll be on par with Louie in a lot of ways. So I want to make this work. It's just a little bit more work than some of the other characters are. I honestly considered dropping Madeline, not using her at all here, but... I wanted to at least give her a fair shake and be able to cover it in a video because I know a lot of other people are struggling to make Madeline work because of her accuracy. So this is at least an outline of something that can help and can be better. But uh, of course, we do have Ike's a range of engaged weaponry as well. Having, oops, having a smash hammer is really nice for when you're facing off against other armored units. The Irvin for extra res and the Ragnall for extra defense, plus these being able to deal a lot of damage and Ragnall being able to hit from range. They all complement this kind of playstyle. It's Ike is the tank emblem for sure, but it's nothing special, nothing to write home about, and it doesn't synergize in uh, any particular way with anything that Madeline has going on other than being really tanky. So uh, I do want to experiment with some other builds for Madeline and the other wins, but for now, this is what I've got. If you have any particular builds for any of these three characters that you are very happy about that you would like to share, please do so. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Some of the stuff that I've learned about build-wise and started to experiment with started with suggestions from viewers like yourselves. So don't be afraid to share. I would love to hear about it. And if uh, you give me something that I'm using and really like, I'll well shout it out that it came from you. So. Uh, that said, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. Let me know what you guys think about these builds. If you have any suggestions of how to make these particular builds better on top of any other builds that you would suggest, let me know. And until the next time, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all so much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. Hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.